Hello and welcome back to the garden for part two of my garden walk round. So we left off with semi undenaria fastuosa. I'm surprised more people don't grow this because it is a really good, tall, upright, conforming bamboo. Everybody seems to want to grow far geezers. There you go. Um, more collocasias. These seem to be a lot bigger down here. With lommy pine. Uh, so this this area is very much work in progress as you can see with uh, kind of what's going on we're going to build a structure here at some point hopefully over the winter so yeah there's another tetrapanax at the back another rex um another schlephra here this is chapana another one from krug still putting out new leaves and then next to that another brassiopsis dumicola so this is this was planted last year, uh, it's been fine over winter, absolutely no damage whatsoever and it's still pushing out new leaves, looks amazing. Um, lots of things growing in pots here, it's just a good place to store them. Another schlephra in a pot, uh, the schlephra macrophylla which got huge leaves and we are going to plant this at some point. It was planned for this year but we've just not got around to it. Um, the first of some of the really established bamboos in the garden, this is Fargesia scabrida. That's been in about nine years I think. If you want to see how big a clump forming bamboo gets, this and the one further around the garden, Fargesia morellae, will give you a good idea. Hello. Um, this is standard form of Tetrapanax papyrifer. That's been in, I'm guessing, that was maybe a little bit longer than the Scabrida. So maybe 10 years now. Got a couple of tree ferns here, which look great. The combination of all the foliage around here, I really like it. Some miscanthus in pots in there as well. And if I stick my camera through, you should be able to see the trunk. On the, on the Tetrapanax, huge. One of my favourite little bamboos here, this is Indocalamus tessellatus. Really like the foliage on that. Another Tetrapanax, so this uh, this came out as a double stemmed one, so I've, I've let it grow as such. That looks great. There's a waggy there at the back, and another Schlephra here, which is uh, the Lavii, but this is the kind of cut leaf variety. You can zoom in on the new foliage, you can see what I mean. There is another one further around the garden which has got a slightly different shape. Good old spotty dotty there. And then we come to a bed, which is quite big, it's about four and a half metres wide, two and a half metres deep. Built this bed with one, one purpose or one plant in mind and that's Phyllostachys Fivax which is in the middle. Well that's going to take a few years to get going so I've filled it out with a lot of other plants. There's Ricinus, Nicotiana, um, Colocasias. So this Colocasia here is Metallica. It's well over, well it's about two metres tall I reckon. Uh, I only grow one Colocasia that I've got to overwinter or dry store and it's Metallica and I only grow one for one simple reason really it keeps my life simple rather than having loads of different types dotted about the Kosianas are flowering there is a, a couple of permanent residents here though and the first one of those is a Trachy on the corner this is one you don't see very often this is Trachycarpus tachyl or tachyl not sure how you say that. I may get some of these names wrong. Bear with me. Right, somebody gifted me this earlier this year. I've not got a clue what it's called. If you do know, you let me know. All I know is it's vicious. <laughs> and this can of musifolia at the back, you can just about make out Miscanthus uh, Hedicium, which has just finished flowering, which is a shame. And then the mother of all on set at the back, which is, I'm guessing, three metres tall. Um, 
it's raised up about a foot because it's in a raised bed and it's yeah it's got to be three meters this year i overwintered that one in the cellar and it came through absolutely fine brought it into the house in spring got it going again yeah and that's what you get plenty of water plenty of feed there's more solanums here as well uh, we're coming up to the seating area now there's a couple of schlefras here some of the more tender varieties bodonerii which is just i think that's how you say it anyway bodonerii mm -hmm. it's just starting to flower um <laughs> sasa palmata there which has escaped well i've kind of just got it out of the pot to cut it in half not got around to it yet it's just carrying on growing like sasa palmata does uh schlefra trevazides which has got amazing foliage but not very hardy although this one survived at the side of the house quite happily over winter but we did have a really mild winter so that helps Schleffra gracilis here I'm going to plant that uh, probably this weekend because I've got a really sheltered spot in the garden so that's going to that's going to live there for a while there is a Taiwaniana planted in that spot I'm going to move that and put the gracilis in there a big olive and I'll clamber over sun lounges and seats this is a really nice place to sit. And there's lots of dailies here as well, which my partner's done a fantastic job with this year. Another Schleffra here. So this is Taiwaniana, but it's the Needham's form. I find this plant really difficult. It's a lot more delicate than the regular Taiwaniana. It's got a little bit of a guard around it to stop the dog, dogs bumping into it and stuff like that. But it seems to be settling in at last, kind of doing okay. A low quat there and Fargesia nitida, one of the original plants in the garden, and Mahonia there as well, which I've trimmed all the foliage off the lower branches. It looks really cool like that. And yet another Schleffra, this is another Rhododendrifolia, which is quite happy here, looking really well. And at that point, I'm going to end this video and um, Keep an eye out for part three. Goodbye.